Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to do a somewhat brief video, or at least brief in my terms, about this sword right here, which is the L6 Tencho Katana from uh, Motoharo Evolution Blades. Now, Evolution Blades is the uh, brand name, I believe. Motoharo is the series, and the L6 Tencho would be the name of this type of sword. Though they don't really have, you know, exact models that you can go out and buy, though. If you contact Jason Yoon, I believe is his name, at uh, Evolution Blades, he's the owner and proprietor. He can help you find something like this or something that'll suit your needs. Uh, more accordingly and i'm going to talk about this sword and i've been somewhat hesitant to do so because it doesn't really have i don't have anything unique or better to say over what i talked about when i reviewed this sword which might look the same but it's different this is the lmc from motahara evolution blades i'll link my earlier review in the description down below if you're interested just about everything i have to say had to say about this sword is going to be echoed in this sword all the things that i really really liked which were pretty much everything um will will be will be pretty much echoed here. Now, the L6 Tencho is a thicker sword. It's not as, as light. It's I haven't cut with it as much. I don't. I use it primarily for Iaido. Um, but all of the things that are good about the LMC in terms of its build quality and attention to detail and all that kind of stuff are echoed here. It's, it's very, very similar in that regard. So that's, I suppose, the meat and potatoes of what I have to say. It's a fantastic sword. All of the things are good and there's very little to complain about. It's a very expensive sword, so bear in mind the budget is uh, is up there. I believe this one would be about $2,000 thereabouts, and depending on your preferences, Evolution Blades can cost five, ten thousand $10,000, depending on how, how crazy up there you want to go. But anyway, sorry about the, the noise. Uh, this sword, if I talk a little bit about why I choose this one over the LMC, because in my early review of the, the sword I mentioned, the light mat cutter, uh, I mentioned it's fine for EI and that it's a very comfortable sword to use to cut mats. It's a very comfortable sword uh, to use for EIDO. So why do I have a second one? Well, um, I got it secondhand and it was at a price that I just couldn't deny and I'm glad I got it. And is it worth $2,000? Would short answer be yes. It's a fantastic sword. I like it because this particular version has a leather grip, which feels really nice and it's very sturdy and hardy. It has a slightly more narrow grip as well, which odd despite my uh, my grip size, and, and you would think I might like a, a larger grip. I prefer a more narrow one, and this is, is a little bit more narrow. It happens to fit my hands a little better. I like the waisted shape aesthetically. I, I would I would say one thing to maybe consider, if you're thinking about getting one like one of these, while it has a very pretty look, it can abuse your hands somewhat. So if I take the sword out and I do, uh, you know, cutting and whatnot, you notice that my left hand sits here and the flub of my hand may rest um, around this kind of kasha area. And if I'm uh, swinging very forcefully and I stop abruptly, the little ledge here can find its way into the meat of my hand and cause a little bit of discomfort. Now, it's more me and than the sword. It's nothing wrong with the sword. It's it's rounded in such a way that it's not going to make me bleed or anything. But there's a, you know, a pointy bit right here that if I squeeze really hard and stop abruptly, kind of jams itself into my hand and can be uncomfortable. So bear in mind that while this shape I think is very, very attractive, it comes at, at something of a cost. Um, otherwise, the grip is very, 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 very comfortable feeling. The sword is light and nimble, and this one as well has a bohi, which is the other main reason. The grip is a little bit more to my liking, and it has a bohi, which is very vocal. You can hear I'm not swinging it very hard, and it's it's just easy for me to hear, which if I if I mention some of my practice in the dojo, I often don't hear the, the swishy sound that I make with a sword, uh, and my classmates do. And so it's, it's tough for me to hear if I'm doing it right. This one I can hear, my instructors can hear it really well uh, as well. So if I'm, if I'm getting the wind sound kind of at the top of my swing or at the bottom, it's easier for them to identify, critique, and help me correct my, my form and help me improve. So those are all things that make me use this one over the other. Uh, but that's really it. It's just that I have an option and this one is absolutely fantastic. If I go over some of the other details, I mentioned that, you know, there's a price to be paid for this Tencho style horn kashra at the end. It's pretty rough and can jam into my hands, but it's really well executed. It's well polished. The edges are rounded in such a way that it's not trying to hurt you, but it certainly can. Um, if you get it kind of popped in your face as well, it's, it's on there pretty tight. It doesn't come off. It doesn't wiggle. The Ito is exceptionally tight. The diamonds are pretty well formed and made. This one has been used quite a bit, so they're marginally deformed at this point, and they run over the uh, uh, the Minuki in such a way that they, they looked a little off in some spots. But uh, other than that, the Ito is exceptionally tight. It's held up really well. I've, I've held it with sweaty hands and swung it around quite a bit, and it's, it's still uh, very, very comfortable to use. 
the semi gout underneath has been uh, like lacquered and then washed off so it really makes the nodule size pop this would be a medium size i guess i don't see any emperor node or anything like that but really uh, aesthetically pretty to look at all the transitions in terms of where the ito lines up in every direction are, are really well executed uh, it's it's very very comfortable the only kind of manufacturing flaw i might see would be i can make out the samegawa bumps underneath the flat part of the ito on the top rung beneath the fuchi area and i don't know if that's even bad or incorrect but i don't particularly like it um i think the the samegawa are usually kind of filed down in that area so that the nodules don't kind of bubble up or poke through other than that you can also notice that my Suba has been dinged, it's been dropped. I bought it secondhand, as I noted, and it came to me that way, but not, not necessarily a problem. I got some pings and dings in the scabbard. Other little things, though, all the transitions really line up well. The Suba uh, fits really well. It doesn't fall out, it was tensioned well. It feels right in terms of uh, pushing the scabbard in and out. The Kweguchi has been shimmed in such a way that it, it fits really well. It's got a nice taper to the uh, scabbard, which is not something you see in a lot of swords. It doesn't bind, and it's also quite quiet if I shut up here. You can hear it a little bit, but it's not raspy or anything like that. Easy to do, uh, easy to do kata with. Again, it doesn't fall out. Just a, a, a nice, pleasurable sword to, to use. The other transitions between the Fuchi and the Koiguchi area line up in such a way that it doesn't draw your eye. The blade is pretty. It's not really got anything special to look at. It's an L6 blade with a Saguha style hamon. Um, and the Kasaki, poorly polished, you know, not, not great. Um, but that's, <laughs> um, I guess, you know, not something that you can expect even in a $2,000 sword. It doesn't have folding lines or anything like that, but it has a, a presence and a beauty onto its own that I find certainly attractive. And the hamon stands out with enough, enough zazz, you could say. Uh, it's got a very pleasant shape. It's a little thicker than the LMC, but I don't notice it in terms of movement. It's still a very comfortable weight to use. And again, I noted that it's it's very, very vocal. And as a training tool, it's it's absolutely fantastic. So I use this for Eido primarily. I don't cut with it. Um, I have an LMC if I want to cut with it. But frankly, I test so many swords that I don't get a chance to cut with a lot of the same sword all the time. If I did, I'd probably use the LMC. This one is no slouch, but I prefer the LMC for uh, specifically Tamashigiri or, or cutting straw mats. It's a little more purpose-built to do it. Um, not that either sword can't, but that would be my choice for doing EI and doing a training tool and, and cutting the air. I prefer the Tensho style one and the profile that it is because, again, it's just more comfortable to use as a training tool. Uh, on that note, if I hold up some other swords, this is a Citadel Bamboo, another favorite sword. I think it's fan it's a fantastic product, but in terms of use as a tool for Japanese swordsmanship, it certainly is good, but it's just not not as good. It's a little raspier, a little louder. Uh, the habaki, small details don't fit. I should also note the habaki on the <laughs> on the uh, Motohara piece. The sides don't touch. The spine has little, uh, the back of the habaki where it touches the moon, it has little feet that come over the edge, just little very, in, you know, small details that are done right, little nuances that you might not even know to look for are, are done right on the Motohara piece that other ven vendors, even uh, very nice ones like the, the Citadel, don't don't tend to do the same way. Uh, the Citadel binds, for example, a little bit, the habaki, interesting and different, but doesn't uh, fit and touches the sidewall a little bit differently. It's also just a little different shaped um, Profile-wise, I guess they're all kind of contemporary-looking things, and the polish isn't much to speak of. Um, the I like the fittings more on the Citadel piece. It has more of a handmade touch to it, but uh, if you want fancy fittings and things like that, it's just a matter of money and time, because you can certainly have Motohara do, do up uh, some sort of custom project for you. The other bit I should note is this is my Hanwei bamboo mat that I had remounted, and you can see that it's got a cylindrical or slender grip in comparison to some of the others, and I like this Hondachi style fitting, honestly, quite a bit. It has kind of a, a, a corner on it that doesn't butt into my hand as much, and it's also quite slender, and I, I, it feels quite nice in my hand. So that's the other option, but this sword, by the time it's done, probably cost as much or more as the, uh, the Motohara, and so, well, I really enjoy this sword. I, I couldn't argue that the vast majority of people are probably better off spending the money to just buy an Evolution Blade or Motohara LMC or Tencho style or whatever style happens to fit fit your need. Anyway, fantastic sword. I really, really enjoy it as a practitioner tool. All of the same pros that I would say and cons of primarily just being very expensive <laughs> are 
are there. So check out the uh, earlier video that I did. I'm not going to cut with it or do much of anything with it other than what you, you hear me ramble about here. Uh, but there's plenty of other more proficient cutters that have cut with these swords, and, and they're obviously very, very capable. They're winning tournaments and uh, doing all sorts of good stuff there. So you can be assured that they certainly can cut. Um, I'm just not going to do it in this video. So anyway, I'll put links in the description down below to other people that have cut with them and other resources in the Evolution Plates website. Highly recommended. Certainly worth the money, but it certainly costs a lot. If you practice Japanese swordsmanship, I hope you get a chance to check one of these out. They're absolutely fantastic tools. That's all I've got. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.